The environmental conversation, it does invoke a lot of emotions. And anxiety is one of them. I considered how something like an environmental work could be a spectacle, something that will gain the imagination and the wonder of people, but at the same time have a sort of core message that it sends home. Thor is essentially a two and a half tonne block of ice sculpted like a, an iceberg, hanging suspended 20 metres via a crane over the harbour. It's a durational work and it goes for approximately about eight hours. There's three performers. Performer one is sort of destruction at any cost. Performer two is this idea that of coming together and realising the connection between we as creatures and the natural world. And performer three is this idea of hope and future generations. The instigation of this idea came out of the bushfires in 19. I was really affected by the bushfires and I felt uh, I had a lot of emotions. I was sort of lost a little bit and I was trying to find a way that I could positively contribute to, I don't know, the conversation or trying to make change. So I was thinking about something that erodes. It was actually primarily around our bushland eroding from fire and it wasn't particularly about glaciers, but it's about understanding of our natural world being eroded. I mean, the first logistical challenge is that it's ice, that it's a piece of ice, like it, it melts. There's ice sculptures and there's ice cities in Japan, and, but there's nothing I could find where the, like a two and a half ton piece of ice was suspended from itself. Yeah, it was two and a half to three years of experimentation. We started lifting buckets of water with string. And we slowly moved up in weight. And every engineer we'd talk to would just sort of go, oh, we're not, we don't, we'd like to not to be involved. In some ways, that spurred me on even more. Eventually, we got to one tonne, so we used an IBC that they use for feeding cattle. Then from there, we went to skip bins, so started freezing giant skip bins. We were getting to the sort of 1.8 tonne. And then we went into, OK, cool, we've suspended a giant skip bin, but it looks like a giant frozen skip bin, so we need to start aesthetically trying to shape this. What we built is a platform, and a physical platform, like an ice platform, and a platform for voices. Vicky Van Herk, I got her in and I said, oh, how are you with heights? She said, yeah, I think I'm fine, I'm fine. And I think we climbed up a ladder and it was like about four metres and she was like, OK, let me just sit here for a little while. <laughs> let me just... And I saw, mm, OK, well, we've got a little way to go. I wanted to be a part of the project so badly. I think he was sometimes second-guessing his original decision to keep me on board. She was determined to get on the ice. That was the other thing. She said, Josh, I want to do this work and I will regret not doing it. Getting on the ice, it was like, I knew I was nervous, but I would try so hard to actively not think about it. Because I knew if I, like, sort of lent into the nerves or thought too much about it, then I would really start thinking about the fact that I have to perform for two hours and 45 minutes, which I've never done before. And it's like, can I physically do it? Can I mentally do it? The ice was unforgiving. It was yep. slippery, it was hard. The top wasn't flat, so it was like slightly rounded. So even if you just sit, because you have no grip on your clothes, you like slowly just like start sliding down. <laughs> and so you're like squeezing your whole muscles just to like sit still. I felt like our bodies were also an extension of the environment. Like, mm. how much could we stand? Because a lot of people came up to me and said, you could have done that in half an hour. And I was like, yeah, but it's not a show. The point is, is to stay with it until you feel uncomfortable. If that's what happened to that ice, and this is what happened to our bodies over three and a half hours, just imagine how much the environment is screening. What I always set out to do was to create something that was almost like a natural museum. You experience it as if it's sort of out of place or it's from another time. I wanted to transport people from this hot summer to the places where actually ice is melting and, and to have something really foreign in a place that people know. I hope the work contributes positively to the conversation more than negatively. Because of course there's cost to it and there's cost to the environment for this work to continue.
this work ultimately should leave people with hope. There's something left here. Yes, it's been compromised, but there is something worth still fighting for. And at no point is doing nothing okay.